Adobe just released their 2022 updates of their software and Lightroom got a really nice update that I want to talk to you about today and this is both in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic as well as in Photoshop Camera Raw and what I'm going to talk to you about today is the new masking tool in Lightroom. So basically what masking is, it just collects the brush and the gradient tools under this one tab that is called masking. So let's dive straight into Lightroom and I'm going to show you how the new masking tool works. So here we have a few images that we're going to work with today and I'm using Lightroom Classic and when we go up to the develop tab we can see straight away that below the histogram above the basic corrections tab we have this new tab we do have the crop tool just as we used to, the spot removal tool and the red eye correction tool just as we used to, but now there's this new masking tool as well. And after updating the first time you click on it, you will see this important changes tab appear, which will basically go through all of the new changes and the new features of this masking tool. So now that the masking tab is open, we can straight away see these two new features, the select subject and the select sky. These are something that we never had in Lightroom before. Then we have the old brush, linear gradient and radial gradients, which we are used to from the previous versions of Lightroom as well. And then we have the color range and the luminance range options, which are the same that we used to have in the brush and the gradients. But now you can use those for the whole image, so they're not limited to just like refining the brush and the gradients, but you can use them as independent selection tools as well. So I'm going to start off with a basic radial gradient because that is a tool that we all know so we can go through all of these new features more easily. So when I click on the radial gradient you can see this new masks window open. And this is a floating window so you can move it anywhere you want or you can also minimize it from this little arrow here. Or you can drag it to the spot between the histogram and the adjustments for these masks. So that is where I like to keep it so that I have everything on the right hand side. And now we have already selected the radial gradient so I can just draw a circle anywhere on the image. And now you can see the mask appear on the right hand side. And this mask one is actually a mask group so we can add as many masks as we want below this one group. So when we click this mask one open we can see we have one radial gradient here and then we have our add and subtract buttons down here below and if we click on add we can add a second masking tool whichever we want to use. Let's just go with a second radial gradient and then we can just draw a second one. So now we have two masks that are below the same mask group and we can tweak these masks independently. But when we do changes to the adjustments of this mask, for example, let's add some contrast. It is applying the contrast to both of these areas at the same time. So that is where the mask groups come in handy. If you want to do changes to multiple parts of the image at the same time and then you may want to tweak them later on, you can have these mask groups so they're all within the same group and you can do those adjustments only once and you don't have to tweak every individual mask. And now if I want to create a mask that is separate from this mask group, I can just click on the create new mask and let's say we want to have a linear gradient that is going to create a new mask group so let's just create that. And now we have mask 2 and mask 1. So these are now two groups instead of individual masks. But we don't need this so we can just delete that. And let's go back to our mask 1 group. And actually I'll delete the lower gradient and then I'll create a subtract gradient. So if we just click on show overlay, click on subtract and then I go down to a new radial gradient and then I draw one. And let's just bring down the feather of this. So you can see that we're actually erasing this circle from the first mask that we drew. And this is something that you could never really do that well in Lightroom before. So if you wanted to erase a part of a mask, you had to do it with the brush and you could never combine these masks like this. So now we have a lot more power on how we create these masks and how we refine them. And we can still use the brush. So if I just create a subtract mask with the brush, then I can just draw anything I want on this and it'll subtract from that mask that we had there just as we used to in the previous versions of Lightroom. So now we can mix and match all of these masking tools together and we can not only add to the previous masks but we can also subtract with any of the masking tools available in Lightroom. And I think that is really cool. That just gives us so much more power over our masks. And the fact that we can have as many mask groups and as many masks in those groups as we want to is just 
Really, really powerful and I love it that they brought this feature into Lightroom. Now let's say I want to create a new select sky mask in here and actually Lightroom does a really good job with selecting just the sky so you can see that this tree is not really selected but the sky is and I'll just dislike show overlay and let's say we'll have another linear gradient on the bottom half of the image. So now you can see that we have three mask groups that are named mask 1, mask 2 and mask 3 and that might get a bit confusing if you have a lot of these mask groups but if you just double click on one of them you can rename it so let's say circle we can have sky and then we have bottom. So we can rename all of these mask groups and we can even go inside the mask groups and rename all of these masks that we have inside these groups. So this will just help you organize your mask groups and your masks so that your mask panel in Lightroom won't get all messed up with all of these mask one, brush one, radial gradient four named masks and you can have your own names for every single mask and mask group. And I know I'm not the type of a person that would rename their masks so I don't know if I'm gonna use this feature but it's nice to have there if you want to stay organized. But let's go to the overlay selections. So previously we only had this like red overlay but now if we click on this red square to the right side of the masks panel you can see this new overlay mode window pop up and we can choose whichever color we want from here and we can even change the opacity of this. So let's say for something like this I would want to have a bright purple mask overlay so I can have that. I'm not limited to just the red as we used to and I can even change the opacity of this overlay so it's a lot easier to see which part of the image we have actually selected with this new overlay mode tool. And we can even go further by choosing a different mode from this overlay mode drop down so if we want to see a color overlay on a black and white image we can do that as well so this is really easy to see what we're actually doing or what we're actually selecting in this image. Or we can have image on white or image on black or whichever mode you like the best but personally I prefer seeing this like colored image with a color overlay I just think that works for me but there are so many options in this overlay mode now that I bet every single person out there will find a mode that they like and you can even have the overlay show the affected area or the unaffected area I think it's easier to see the affected area but that is just personal preference once again and now that we have the show overlay selected when we do any changes it will automatically disable the show overlay so we can actually see what we're doing to the image and the overlay is not distracting us from seeing what changes we are doing to the image. And when you let go of your mouse the show overlay will automatically select once again. Now if you've made a ton of different masks or mask groups and adjustments to those within your edit you can actually view what each mask or mask group is doing to your image. So I know all of these look horrible, I just wanted it to be very clear to see what I'm doing. So if I just go to our circle mask and I click on this eye on the right side of the mask group, it'll deactivate that mask and I can do the same to as many masks as I want to. Or if I want to deselect all of the masks at once, I can go to this little switch on the left hand side of the masks tab and that'll just deselect all of the masks at once. Now when you're working with radial gradients or linear gradients you have these new handles in the masks so obviously we can change the size of the mask and the rotation of the mask but we can also change the feather of the mask from these new handles. And with the new brush tool there's actually a new option called density so this is basically the opacity of this tool so if we bring our density down to let's say 30 our basically opacity of this tool will be at 30% so density equals opacity basically. And then we have the new color range and luminance range. So color range is really simple when you create a new mask you get this eyedropper and you can just either click on the image or draw a box around the image and Lightroom will select the colors of the spot where you clicked or the area that you drew the box around. So let's just draw a box around the sky so we're basically selecting all of the blues in the image and then we can refine this selection with this refine slider here. And if we want to redo our selection we can just hover over the image and click on something else. For example this orange and then we can just refine the selection to have a bit more orange selected than what we just clicked on. Or we can draw a box around it and now we're selecting a lot more colors because inside of that box there are a lot more colors than if I would just click on one single pixel. And now we can do tweaks to these oranges if we want to. So let's say we bring up the contrast and take out all of the color. 
and then let's create a new luminance range mask and we can see this small box appear and we have handles on both of the sides of the box so this left hand side is basically your black point and the right hand side is your white point and the lower handles are for the fall off of the mask or basically how smooth the mask will be so inside of this box is everything that is being selected period and then the mask will gradually decrease towards these lower handles so if the lower handle is right up to the box we're not getting any feathering in the mask it'll just be a hard mask to that point but if our fall off handle is far away from the box the fall off will be smooth or the feathering of the mask will be smooth and then if you scroll down to the adjustments of these masks you have this new reset sliders automatically button down here and this is something that I really appreciate because I used to hate it in the previous versions of Lightroom when you tweaked the settings of a mask and then you drew the mask afterwards those settings would kind of stick to the masks and when you went on to draw a second mask those tweaks would be in that second mask as well so I'm really happy about these reset sliders automatically selection here even though this might seem like a very small thing now about the new select subject tool I think that is mainly for people so if we have a photo of a leaf like here it'll select it but it won't really be a very good selection so you can see we're selecting a lot of this like tree part here as well and for example if we go to this image of this like tower and click on select subject we're not really getting a good selection at all here so the select subject would be really good on portraits but I'm a landscape photographer so I don't really have any portraits on my computer but I've tested that out and it works really great I just can't show you those images because they're not really mine but I can tell you the select subject is really really powerful for photos of people and I guess we have to test it out a little bit more to see how well it works on different subjects like items or pets or whatever it is but I will be making a dedicated video about how well the select subject tool works on all kinds of different objects and people and animals and all of that stuff but while waiting for that video I think you should check out this video on why I think the gradients are such an amazing tool that is not made with the new version of Lightroom with the new masks but it works kind of in the same way just not with the new power of the new masks tool thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one